College football big game previews for week number eight. Brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. You can watch and wager on any of these games at any of Tunica's six incredible sports books. Horseshoe Gold Strike, Samstown, Hollywood, First Jackpot, and Fitz Casino. You can get more information over at tunicatravel.com. Don't forget about our picks contest. It is up. It is rolling. It is ready to rock. It is go, free. And it's free. You pick 10 games against the spread. Go over to winningcureseverything.com. Click on the little button that says football picks contest. Ah, we, uh, Bruce C. from Hartsell, uh, Alabama won last week with a 9-1 and one record. So you better bring your A game. We had 120 entries last week. 9-1, and one, brother. That is strong. 9-1. and one. We had two people that went 9-1. and one. He had to win it on the uh, on the tiebreaker. Woo! Uh, so let's, let's go on and jump into this week's biggest games. We're not going to start with the college game day game this week. Because I don't think it is the biggest game. We've got a class of two undefeated teams well, it, in what is a Power 5 conference. But the spread is, is way different in this game as opposed Correct. to – Like the, the difference between the two teams is way different. I think the better game, is at game least looking at the line, is game day's game. Oh, yeah, yeah. But – I'm not going to argue but that. But this is the biggest stakes game yep. because you've got – Two potential playoff teams. One of these teams could make the playoffs. NC State at Clemson. Now, the opening line and the line that is, by the way, the lines this week are being brought to you by Fitz Casino down in Tunica, Mississippi. Go out and check them out and get your wagers in down there. The opening line and the line on Tuesday morning is Clemson minus 17. The over-under is 55 and a half. Saturday at 2.30 p.m. ESPN Memorial Stadium at Clemson, South Carolina. NC State only averaging 3.9 yards per run this season, but they only give up 107.4 rushing yards per game and only 3.7 yards per attempt. Uh, so their run defense is pretty good. This offense is not – like they, they use a lot of screens. They use a lot of dump passes, and that's Correct. their running game. So they the, don't let the stats fool you. Clemson, however, they average 7 yards per rush, 281.7 rushing yards per game. NC State averages 8.9 passing yards per attempt. 335 passing yards per game. So, one runs the ball a lot, one passes the ball a lot. They both move the football. Clemson's defense, they have had issues with teams that can throw. Texas A&M put up 430 yards on them. Syracuse put up 250. This should be an interesting game. I was surprised that the line was this big. What What are your thoughts here? My thoughts are is this is better perception, that the majority of the country knows who Clemson is, they have been in the playoffs back to back to back years. They have been in national championship games. They have won national championships. We know who they are. And I would venture to say that other than hardcore college football teams, most people don't realize that NC State is undefeated. And I do agree with that. Great at football. And um, they, they haven't exactly played great teams. No, nope, right? their biggest that's right. win. They I haven't think been is, tested. Their biggest win, I think, is against Boston College. Right. I think that's the biggest win they've got. Uh, the West Virginia game got canceled because of uh, because of a hurricane. One of them, <laughs> since we've had so many here lately. Um, yeah, I, I think you're probably right on this. Um, now I will say that this is one of my gambling picks. Might as uh, well. Clemson is two and four against the spread this season. They are zero oh and four in their last four home games as a favorite. Yep. So I, a lot of that is it's kind of the Alabama thing. It's the yes. Notre Dame thing. They just pump that line way well, way up. Those other teams are good. I don't know that this Clemson team is. Oh, I'm, they're definitely good. They're definitely good. They, they I'm not, I'm, hammered I'm not, Wake Forest yes. last week. I think they're, this is not a great Clemson team. Now, I might be wrong. and They might go on a run. They might win the national championship. What I have seen so far, they are not a scary football team at all. This line should not be that big against another undefeated team that coming off. Both these teams had a bye week before they got to play each other, so that's nice. The, they both should be healthy. They both should be fresh. I, I can't b- understand why this – well, here's the thing. The line opened up at like 15. So it's moved two and a half points. Well, no, no, no. It, it, the line opened at 17. It moved back down so on – it's moved Like down. A, at different offshore accounts. Okay. Um, but several of them I know, like as of before we went on, they were at like 15 and a half. Okay. So it's it's moved down. Because I've still seen it at 17. I thought it opened there, at There 15. are places that it's still at 17. Okay. I thought it yeah. opened at 17. All right, so, 15. Uh, and it, at Fitz Casino, like right now, it is 17. Yeah. Um, so if you want to go down there and get that line, I would I would suggest that. Uh, you, 
we, we will have more reasoning as to why we as to what our pick is and why over at our uh, gambling picks video so go sure. go check that one out and if you're listening on the podcast that'll be in the next segment so uh game number two college game day first game day trip to pullman washington they're going to the palouse oregon opened up as a two-point favorite at washington state uh and i don't have an over under for this one or any of the other ones i didn't i didn't see any that's fine um but i did see one on the clemson game for some reason but either way i put it down um Oregon minus two at Washington State. As of Tuesday morning at Fitz Casino, it was a pick 'em. Saturday, 6 30 p.m. on Fox, Martin Stadium in Pullman, Washington. Oregon gives up 8.1 passing yards per attempt and 239 passing yards per game. Washington State averages 7.7 yards per pass attempt and 413 passing yards per oh, game. Mike Leach, baby. I want you to check these out, all right? Washington State. People think, okay, well, they lost Alex Greenwich to Ohio State last year, so the defense coordinator's gone. Obviously, defense is going to go back to, to being crap. Not the case. Washington State has the number 15 total defense in the country. They're only giving up 4.89 yards per play. Oregon has the number 18 total offense. So this could end up being a good matchup in this game. However, on the other side, Washington State, the number 16 total offense. Oregon is number 50 in yep. total defense. They're going to give up some points. This is going to be a high-scoring yeah. game. Oregon's got to be able to run the football to to control this game. I agree with that, and I don't know that they'll be able to. Washington State's been really good. You know, really good. You know how I feel about Mike Leach. Oh, I, I know I, exactly. I, I think he's one of the top three or four best minds in all of football. Um, Washington State, while they are 5-1 and one this year, they are 6-0 no against the spread. Oregon is, is not so lucky. No, so. no. Washington State's found themselves being a lot of dogs and being five and one. Or not being favored by enough. Or yeah, or not being favored uh, very much. I at will all. say this, they they look better um with with this new quarterback. And his name escapes me right now. Oh, come on. Man. But uh but either way, it it's the, the transfer from uh, uh Gunner Minshew. Is that his name? I think that's right. Gunner Minshew. Uh he's from East Carolina, grad transfer. He was on Alabama's campus and decided to go to Washington State, and he made the absolute right decision because he was he was going to be third string, if that, at Alabama. And now he is, I get it right, Gardner Minshew. Not Gunner. Yeah, Gardner. 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 Good grade. You would think I'd know that. You're good. Off the top of my You're head. You're good. Just crazy. Man, I mean, he. I mean, he's averaging over 400 yards a game, though. Yeah, he's. I it, mean, that's. Throwing for crazy That's kind numbers. That's incredible. Yeah, it, it's out there. That crowd, you talk about a home field advantage. Oh, this Oregon, one, Oregon this at week? home this year has been incredible. They've been good on the road. They're still showing up. They're still playing. That's because Cristobal is a really good head coach. Yeah. And and, and we think he's going to have them ready. But this coming crowd, off of, off of game a day, huge win. Game day never being there. And, Pullman is going to be other An old Crimson being at every game day ever. Yeah, for like 200-something episodes. This, this is a big deal. This yeah. is a big deal for hardcore college football fans. We down here in the South understand this game's a long way away from us. It matters, though. It matters. Oh, it and, and, matters. and they're going to get our buddy uh, Timmy B. Yeah, Tim that's Brando right. Brando's uh, going to call yeah. the game. You got it. So that, that will be a lot of fun to watch. That's uh, 6.30 p.m. on Fox on Saturday. Let's jump into game number three. Your boy Harbaugh against your boy Antonio. I know. I know. I'm excited. Michigan about this game. minus seven at Michigan State. That was the opening line. That is the current line. Saturday, 11 a.m. game on Fox, Spartan Stadium in East Lansing. By the way, Fox has some awesome games this week. I just don't like the 11 a.m. This is too big of a game for it to be an 11 a.m. game. This game matters too much to put it at 11 a.m. I think I agree with that. Yeah. I, the same reason I don't think the Red River rivalry should be at 11 a.m. every year. Let these fans get woke up. Let the let the teams get wake. Let them get loose. Let them get ready. They don't all have to be night games. But you cannot have monster rivalry games at 11 a.m. Well, I mean, they've also College got the Oklahoma TCU be, game at 11 a.m. Well, but so. no one cares about that. Like, that's not, not a rivalry not this game. Year. Not this year. But no, that's I'm not a rivalry, even when TCU's great. That's still not a rivalry. They, yeah, game. they still they still don't really care. In the in the landscape of all of college football, that game does not matter. 
Uh, Michigan is 0-6 against the spread as a favorite against Michigan State. They are 2-4 and straight up uh, the last six years. They have been favored six years straight, and they're only 2-4 and straight up. They have not covered a single game against Michigan State in that time span. Michigan State's last six is a home dog against anybody. 5-1 and one against the spread. They are 3-3 three and three straight up, but they have covered five out of six. Michigan State is number one in the country in rushing defense, only giving up 62 yards per game. Michigan, the number 28 rushing offense in the country, 217 yards per game. Here's the other side of it, though. Michigan is the number two total defense in the country. Strong, man. Real Michigan strong. State is number 80 in total offense. Yep. I would imagine this over-under will be somewhere around 45 points. I would bet the under. Game. I, this, this has 17-14, to 21-17 written all over it. I agree. Written all over it. If I had to lean, I'm not. I'm not touching it as far as nope. me putting money on it. If I had to lean, obviously I'm leaning Michigan State. Uh, but they did just cover a big game against Penn State. So and and I think and that's the way is, they've been this year. Yes, they've but been I, a every other week team. I do you wonder. Ride, you fade. I do wonder, like Harbaugh and those boys have heard so much crap about Michigan State and Ohio State. That's it. They will not be being able to beat so your rivals. And not that Wisconsin's rivals, but not being able to beat top 10 teams, not being able to beat your rivals. They they just brought Wisconsin in town. They whipped, took out some aggression on Wisconsin. And 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 I could if they if they're capable of doing it, they're going to do it. Yes. So now, we'll, we'll now, see. Now, Michigan State might have something to say about that, but the they, fact that Michigan State is number not. 1 in the country in rushing defense, yep. like that's going to Michigan's offense is predicated on that running Shea game. Shea Patterson's going to have to win a game. Yeah. That's it, just it. We're going to see, can he win a game? Did they bring him in to win this game or not? Let's move to the next one. Game number four, Mississippi State at LSU. LSU, you Tigers, they opened up as seven-point favorites this morning. It fits. It was minus six and a half. Saturday at 6 p.m., ESPN, Tiger Stadium in Baton Rouge, Baton Rouge night game in Death Valley. Oh, boy, Mississippi State averages 240 rushing yards per game. Look, bottom line is Nick Fitzgerald is not going to beat these guys throwing the football. We, like, it, it, there's not a whole lot of quarterbacks out there that could do that anyway, but Fitzgerald just can't throw the football. No. Uh, LSU's defense is number 26 in the country against the run. They only give up 120 yards per game. Interesting stat, though. Mississippi State has covered four straight against LSU. LSU's been favored in all of them. Yeah, but usually up until this year, those are big double-digit favorite games. No, no. Uh, two of them were, like, none of them has last been more Last year they than, got housed. So last year they, they were got, favored by seven and a half. Yeah, but, and they got blown out. And so got beat 37-7. That's, to that's, that's seven. different. Before last year, they weren't double-digit wins, double-digit uh, spreads. Uh, one of them was single-digit, and then the other two, one was like 10, one was 11. Okay. Well, I figured double, so, double digits. Yeah. So, uh, now, perception would tell you that State would keep this close. That, no, no, no. I take that back. Perception would tell you State has, has looked awful against, like, Kentucky and Florida and whatever. And going into Baton Rouge at night, State has had success. Now, that was a different coach. This this Mississippi State team, the teams that beat them, what do they do? They stop the run, they stop the run. and they run the football on them. Yeah, and that's exactly what LSU does. What do you, LSU just beat the number two team in the country by doing what? Stopping the run and running the football on them. Yeah. We we got shirts, by the way, <laughs> winningcureseverything.com slash yeah. store. That's, Go click on the store. That is one of Cures our everything. sayings. It says, we believe run that. the ball, stop the run. That's how you win football games, period. Yeah. That's that's how LSU will win this game, but it could be how Mississippi State wins this game. No. It just it well, depends on if, which LSU team if, decides if to Mi show up. If Mississippi State can stop the run and run the football, you're exactly right. I don't know because they do not have the threat of the pass. This LSU defense, if they know you can't throw on them, their linebackers, their defensive ends, their 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 defensive tackles are too good. the The problem that State's going to have is is if LSU has to throw every now and then, they can. If State cannot, if they're one dimensional, they won't win this game. I will say this: LSU, after being blown out in Starkville last year, um, went on a streak yep. of eight straight covers against SEC teams. So they they beat the spread eight straight times. Then they lost to Florida, Florida, and then they, of course, beat the spread and, and won outright as an underdog at home against Georgia. So 
they're nine and one against the spread since State blasted them last year. Uh, it's been kind of a different team ever since that blowout. That's right. So I I do wonder if if LSU just wants to take this out on these Bulldogs. I, I kind of feel bad for Stoops at Kentucky because I think after that Georgia game, Orgeron's coach of the year in the SEC right now, and I don't know that you can give it to Stoops, even though what Stoops has done is pretty damn impressive. But Stoops still has a lot of big games left. That's right. Um, yeah, he can take it. But so does Orgeron. Like Orgeron still got, so got Alabama. A&M, got Alabama. Yeah. Yep, and then and, and, then you and got you Mississippi, Mississippi State. State. No, I, so we can't just say there, this isn't a big game. It's there's big still game. a lot that uh, that can happen here. Uh, game number five, Oklahoma minus seven and a half. Whoa, 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 whoa! We weren't doing Oklahoma. I thought we agreed to do Cincinnati Temple. I thought. To, uh, well, look, that's my first game in the honorable mention. No, 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 that's not an honorable okay. mention game. Okay, cut that. We're we're gonna give the the. Smaller the schools. AAC, this is a better game, right? We both agreed on this, right? Yeah, I, I thought you said Oklahoma. No. That's, that's fine. I said TCU, and this is not yeah. a knock on Oklahoma for people who know that I hate them. No, it's, it's T- okay. It's TCU okay. does not deserve to be mentioned in the in the big games right now. I do agree with that. They just Absolutely. don't. Absolutely. Uh, and, now, we'll, and we'll toss got, them in the honorable you mention. You got but. undefeated Cincinnati. Now, they hadn't really played anybody. Against Temple team that's tough as hell at Temple. Yeah, Temple is uh, this going to be a fun well. game to watch. Temple favored by three and a half. The game is at eleven a.m. on ESPNU. Cincinnati six and zero, but they are against the number one hundred and eighteen strength of schedule. Temple is seventeen three and one against the spread against the AAC in their last twenty one games. This is a tough team. I don't know any other way to describe them other than tough. Jeff Collins has that bunch raring to go. If you want to watch a fun game. Yeah. Like, obviously, Michigan, Michigan State's going to be on at 11 a.m. as well. Oklahoma TCU will be on at 11 a.m. But it, this is the game. This is, this is a fun game. Since he at Temple. We're going to see, is yeah. this Cincinnati team real? Because they're undefeated. Temple's got a couple losses, but. Lost uh, the first two games of the year right. and lost uh, at Boston College. That's right. and, and it was but that super Boston close. College game was a great game. Yeah, it was, it was great. great. Temple game. is a fun team to watch. No, I, I'm going to. I will be watching a lot of this game. I'll be flipping back and forth between the Michigan games. Go get you an Apple TV so you can watch four of them at the same time. Just just do that. Yeah, I, I am I am definitely a fan of this. I think this is the next big game that we've got. TCU, I love Gary Patterson. I'm always rooting for TCU. They don't we, belong in the big games. we we got to jump in the honorable mentions anyway. Let's okay. go on and talk about that. Oklahoma minus 7.5 at TCU. Saturday, 11 a.m., ABC, uh, let's see, Amon G. Carter Stadium. This is an 11 a.m. Uh, game. Fort Worth, Texas. This 11 is why 11 a.m. games were made. Oklahoma has covered the last three against TCU. TCU is minus nine in turnover margin. They're number 126 out of 130. They've, I can't they've explain lost, that. They've lost 15 turnovers in six games. I, I cannot explain that. Me and I, you were texting. I can't, so what, it's, it's six fumbles. Yes, it's but, all. But it's nine interceptions. Yeah. So the interceptions are just. Terrible decisions. That's right. Bad decisions. Yeah. But the fumbles are, listen, you can't fumble the ball that much either. Like, I don't, I just don't no. get it. And it's not one guy that's got like the yips that keeps giving the ball up. It's the it's, whole team. It's everybody. But it, but the interceptions are definitely Sean Robinson. Well, no, well, no the interceptions are on the QB. That's, that's, that's you're on right. Sean Robinson. Um, I, can't, I can't explain that. I don't, I've never seen a well coached team turn the ball over this much. I, I still believe they're a well coached team. I don't know what to do with that. I, I will tell you this, TCU being at home, and I, the, you remember this stat that I gave you last week before the Texas Tech game where I said uh, TCU on natural grass oh, yeah, yeah, is yeah. like 2-16 and 16 yeah. against the spread in their last 18, and at home it's on natural grass. So, like, they are, they're playing in the same spot. But this feels like the kind of game where TCU gets right. Gary Patterson says, we don't. We draw a line in the sand and we show up for this one. Yeah, like that's that's what this feels like. I'm staying away. I've lost I, so much yeah. money on TCU. I ain't, I ain't touching this one. Uh, Oklahoma the is. I could have gone. In the last five years, Oklahoma is four and one against the spread after a bye. Uh, TCU coming off of a loss, they are four and seven against the spread after a loss the last three seasons. Yeah, that ain't great. <sighs> Let's move on. Uh, third honorable mi- or second honorable mention game: Ohio State minus fourteen and a half at Purdue. Purdue on a three-game winning streak. They are three plays away from being six zero this year. They have looked significantly better. Jeff Brom got them boys rolling. Yeah, That's Ohio State uh, did not look good against Minnesota last week. They were down fourteen to ten late in the second quarter. Correct. Were only up seventeen to fourteen at the half and only went on to win like thirty to fourteen. 
a, it, just a strange game because Minnesota has not looked no, good Minnesota's since. No, Minnesota's a terrible football team. Well, and they, they looked good the first three weeks. I mean, they, they beat a really good Fresno State team. And you can talk all the trash you want about Fresno State. I got Not it. you. No. But, like, I'm telling you, Fresno State, numbers-wise, a fantastic football team. They are so good. I mean, they blew the doors off of UCLA, 38-16. to 16. And, well, Purdue in LA. lost all those early games yeah. by, so, like, less so, than two points all over the – Well, yeah, they, they lost to Eastern Michigan. They lost to, you know, whatever. But but they were close games. Uh, Ohio State is 4-6 and six against the spread. Their last 10 is a road favorite. Purdue – they are two and zero against the spread at home as an underdog this year. That's uh, that's on out there, that's on out there. So I, is this one of your gambling picks? It's one of my gambling picks. Okay, I, I'll tell you this. I like Purdue in this spot. I was texting back and forth with Chris Felica. I said, "Look, I know y'all are going from Pullman to West Lafayette." I said, "Can can Purdue pull this thing off?" And and he agrees with me. He thinks like fourteen and a half is a Crazy. lot here. Just Brom will be able to figure respect. out because Ohio State has problems in their secondary. They've given up points to everybody. They they everybody. look completely lost on defense, and I think Jeff Brom's offense is going to be able to score now, a now. Their ton offense on them. is good, but they've given up points to bad offenses. Yeah. So I'm, um, I'm telling you, Jeff Brom. This feels like one of those weekends. Like, we, we had a crazy weekend last weekend, but none right. of the – like, it wasn't completely shocking. Well, no, right? because LSU – most people agree LSU should be on the same level as, as, Georgia. as Georgia. They just haven't been the last couple of years. And, and, and Oregon it, beating it, Washington at right. home is like, just okay. Just blow you away. If and Purdue, then Iowa State beating West Virginia is no, like, no. okay. Everybody called that one. We both had money right yeah. on that one. If Purdue beats Ohio State. That is a shocker. That's a big deal. That's also, a, also, all those other lines, seven points, eight points, nine points. This, this is 14 and a half. 14 and a half. What's 15 point spread? Yeah. That's different. You win that outright, boom, baby. You you think uh, you think West Lafayette's going to be fired up for that one? ABC primetime game? Yeah. I'm let's excited for it. Let's move on. Uh, it's a good honorable mention game. Third honorable mention game, Auburn at Ole Miss. <laughs> the biggest game, and, and it was on Feinbaum's show today, the biggest game of Gus Malzahn's career. I was not prepared to talk about this game at all. Today. Well, we don't, we don't have to talk much about this. I've, I've got three more that we're just going to skim over Two here in a minute. Two bad teams. Um, but Auburn, four and three. Uh, at Ole Miss, Ole Miss is five and two, like and and they had to come back against Arkansas they, they last had week. A, they had hey, a interesting stat ball about Ole Miss. Cruncher. Interesting stat. That, Talk uh, about this. This is kind of this is kind of strange. The uh, are you talking about the, the last three Power Five yep, wins? The last three. Okay. Yeah. Ole Miss's last three wins against Power Five teams. The starting quarterback for the opposing team has gotten injured in every game. They haven't beaten the starting quarterback. In, in in their like, last three power five, well, yeah, d- dating one, back to Nick Fitzgerald last year. Yeah. So Texas Tech starting quarterback went out in the first game this year. Uh, last week against Arkansas, Ty Story goes out, and uh, Nick Fitzgerald in Mississippi State last. Of course, everybody saw that gruesome injury. Uh, but here's if you were thinking about going against Auburn, Auburn is six one and two against the spread in their last nine against Ole Miss. I don't think Ole Miss has got the dogs in this one. This isn't one of my gambling picks, but it, it look Tennessee had some dogs, if, right? If Gus is going to have his team ready, it'll be this. It'll either be they're going to come out fired up and they're going to smoke them, or they're going to come out like a wet blanket and they're going to lay down. One of the one or two things is going to happen. Yeah, this they, Auburn they, team they, is they, going they, to they either look at, quit. Or they look like hey, and I'll they're tell you this: look like they belong in the top ten again. Nobody quits like Auburn, like that, that is, team. That is such an Alabama. Thing oh no, to no, say. no! Not even close. Because if you look back at them, like when they come off of big seasons, let me go check my baseball. When they score. when they start to have a bad year, it goes downhill in a hurry. Like they, I mean, my gosh, they were national champs and two years removed from being national champs. They were three and nine, like. This team, nah, that's Chiswick though. Quitting on Chiswick is completely different because nobody then quitting respect, on Malzahn. Yes, because nobody respected Chiswick even when he won the national championship. I mean, it took an right. all-world caliber quarterback to to win that national championship. You're right. You're right. Uh, I would I would still take Auburn minus three. I think that line is up to four and a half. It fits. 
Du, 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 du. I'm staying away because it wouldn't shock me if they just lay down and, uh, at, and at, they at, die. At Fitz Casino, it is Auburn minus four right now. But I, I'd still like that because I think that Auburn's going to be able to run the football here. Uh, they just got more dudes in the in the middle. We'll see. Um, but we'll definitely see. I mean, it, it wouldn't surprise me if Ole Miss won the game. So they are at home. Next one up, we got three more. Uh, Ooh, let's three do more. That's a lot of honorable mentions. Well, man. But there's some pretty good games. Colorado at Washington. Washington minus 15 here. Uh, Colorado suffered their first loss last week. Washington uh, suffered their second loss, but their first Pac-12 loss last week. Which one is going to bounce back here? Uh, is 15 points too much? As far as gambling is concerned, Colorado tends to do pretty good against big lines. Um, Washington doesn't tend to cover big lines very well. And it's a, it's a home game at night uh, in Seattle for Washington. So we'll see. Uh, next one, Memphis at Missouri. Missouri is up to a nine and a half point favorite. They started as a seven point favorite. People love Missouri right now, and if you're thinking about taking Memphis, look, Mizzou five and zero. Their last five as a home favorite. Memphis one and four against the spread as a road dog since 2016. Just be careful. Let that line get up to ten before you take Memphis if you're gonna take them. All right, just just saying. I might put some money on Memphis, but. I don't feel real good about it. Okay. Anyway, uh, last one, Alabama at Tennessee. Tennessee plus 29. Nick Saban is 8-3 and three against the spread uh, against Tennessee at Alabama. The question here is, does Tua play? If he does, does it matter? Or if he doesn't, does it matter? I, I, I'm not really sure why we're talking about this game. It's the 230 CBS game. That's But that's garbage, though. I, I, you know that. I'm with you. It's you, it's because they've got that. two big fan bases. That's about it. But that's like, terrible. Th- tell me, tell me this. They don't have two big fan bases. Have you seen that Tennessee stadium lately? <laughs> that ain't a fan base. It's big. <laughs> they're like thirty thousand strong. I mean, they're bigger than that. There's a reason they were still the uh, the two thirty CBS game even last year, like multiple times. Uh, tell me though that if, in your opinion, with Tua having the knee injury last week, I whatever, would not play Tua. Okay. I I think the same thing. I would I would not play Tua. I think it's dumb and arrogant if you play Tua. I agree. Unless Saban just hates Tennessee that much, and I think he. But might. that's stupid, though. Why? Why? Why yeah. would Saban hate him? I don't know. I Why would that you hate out. somebody that's never hurt you before in your life? Well, he hated Tennessee at LSU. But why would you hate them that's never hurt you before in your life? I have no idea. He hated Unless them because Fulmer and him competed against guys that they were recruiting against. That hasn't happened in over a decade. He I left, don't went to the pros, former got fired. I mean, this is – if you hate Tennessee now, you, you, you're just petty. You're just a bully. Yeah, because they are – They're bad. They're real, real they're bad. They're whipped dog. And and they still beat Auburn last week. And you're the best team in the country, and it's not close. For you to just consider them – Just let know that you don't think much for, of the win at for Auburn For you to week. consider them a rival is sad. Is sad. Well, look, when – Nope, there's no well. It's sad, Gary. Look at their record and look at yours over the last decade. How is that a rivalry? You feel good about yourself? <laughs> you going to light up that stogie afterwards and say it's been 19,000 days since they've beaten us? Woo-hoo. Yeah, Mike, I mean, that's crazy. I mean, Tennessee. That's kind of sad. No Tennessee fan has celebrated a, uh, a win over Alabama by tweeting by going on Facebook, by watching Netflix, by getting on no, their smartphone. these things by... didn't exist. Yeah, the so last the time fact Tennessee that won. we consider this a rivalry is sad. It used to be one. It's okay. back in the day. A lot of Nebraska used to be good too, and they don't have a W. Now you read about the that. last time this was a rivalry. Nebraska was important in football. Do you know how much I love when you get on these rants? I just think <laughs> it's sad. I, I, I'm with you. I understand. I understand. All right, we have given you all the information you need to be a winner. Go down to Tunica, Mississippi. Get your action in. It's your favorite sports book. They got six of them down there. You can get the information over at tunicatravel.com. That is going to wrap up our college football preview for week number eight.